Yo, Elliot, my question is, what do I do when everything is crumbling down, when everything is breaking down, when nothing is going my way, when I feel like the world is upside down in my head? Well, did you know that nothing is built up if there isn't a breakdown? This is a law of nature, right? Like even these trees I'm looking at outside in front of me, right? The only reason why they can survive is because of the dead, broken down organic material in the soil that they eat, right? Out of chaos comes order. They work together. Out of darkness comes light, right? Out of breakdown comes buildup. You know this is true because if you go to the gym, what are you doing? When you're in the gym, you're challenging yourself with weights. You're breaking down your muscle fiber. You are literally breaking muscle fibers. You're injuring muscle fibers when you're training at a gym. Did you know that? Your cr the muscle fibers are crumbling down. Everything is breaking down. And the muscle's like, oh, it's not going my way. This hurts, right? Just like you. But what happens? What happens after that? few days, a few weeks, a few months later, you lift in more weight, you're stronger. And that thing that seemed like it was so hard a couple months ago is a piece of cake. I think that's the best way for me to, the best analogy for me to help you understand the cycles of life is to look at what happens in the gym. It's really the greatest metaphor. In fact, that's how I became famous as Yo Elliot on my Strength Cam channel because I, was, I would use the gym as a metaphor for how to win in life. It's a perfect thing because you all, all know what it's like to be in the gym, right? You break down so that you can build up. So you ask me, what do I do when I feel this way? Well, the first thing I would say is have no feelings about it. Have no judgments about it. Look at it, see it for what it is, which is one part of a two-part process. That's just like the guy who is trapped in winter time, right? It's winter time. You're looking outside his window, all the trees are bare, all the trees are barren. There's nothing but cold wind <whistles> whistling, whistling, and just freezing cold frost on your nose, right? It's coming down, all that snow. And he says to himself, man, this, this world is cold and any, no one can survive in it and it's miserable because it's so cold. But the same dude forgot that, hey buddy, in a couple of months, springtime's coming. Did you know that? Springtime's coming and it's gonna warm up and then it's gonna be summer. And you know what people do because they're so dumb? Then the summertime comes and they go, oh, it's too hot. It's so hot, it's miserable, I can't handle it. I don't wanna live anymore. It's too hot out here, not realizing, Hey, buddy, in a couple months, fall is going to be here. It's going to cool off. Don't worry. This is the cyclical nature of life. You're crumbling down. You're breaking down because a new you is emerging. Think about a, a, a caterpillar when it goes into its cocoon or chrysalis, right? It goes into this cocoon and there's all kinds of biological, chemical enzyme processes destroying that that caterpillar. A caterpillar is pretty. Caterpillars are pretty, right? They're nice. They look fuzzy. They got like pretty little colors on them. And then they creep along on the, on the leaf. But then they go into this catabasis of sorts where things just get weird, right? And then he starts to crystallize and shit just starts breaking down, right? And from what I understand, they turn into like a mush. There's like mush inside there. But by and by, it starts to build up. So that caterpillar has to lose its life, but something starts to build up on the inside, inside that chrysalis. And before you know it, it starts cracking open, starts opening up and out comes what? A beautiful butterfly. The caterpillar had to die. It had to be broken down. It had to be dissolved and discarded. Why? For something better to emerge. The gym, the caterpillar. I'm going to keep giving you an example. I'm going to keep giving you examples. A spark, right? Is, I think about this because I recognize myself as a spark. My elemental nature is a spark. I, I start fires. But the spark, for it to become a fire, must die in the flame. The spark is no more when the flame rises, 
right? A spark is a spark. You know what a spark looks like, right? You ever seen a spark? Like we look at it with like fire, right? When you do like a bonfire and what comes out of it? Little like sparks, right? And if one of those sparks lands on something flammable, what happens? The spark hits and then a fire emerges. Where's the spark? The spark is gone, but the spark is in the fire. Think about a seed too. I'm looking at these trees out here, right? In fact, I got, I put out a bunch of orange trees out here, right? Each one of these orange trees are growing in complexity, right? They got longer, a thicker, thicker uh, trunk, more branches, more leaves, start producing fruit, right? It's an amazing thing, but what happened? How did that start? One seed. Where is that seed? Where's that? I'm looking at the tree. I'm like, where's, if I go dig up in the ground, am I going to find the seed that that tree came from? No, because the seed died. Like you, you say everything's crumbling down and everything's breaking down. What do you think is happening to that seed? It's cracking open, splitting open. The dirt and, and, and microorganisms are probably dissolving parts of it. And then something new starts coming up out of it. Your life follows the same laws of nature. The problem is people get stuck. And why do you get stuck? Because you judge. You're looking at things around you and they could be crumbling down, legit. They could be crumbling down and breaking down. But your attachment, you saying nothing's going my way. That's a judgment. That's a judgment that things aren't going your way. Things are unfolding perfectly for you, right? If you start breaking eggs and somebody says, oh my goodness, things are going awry. These beautiful white eggs are breaking. It's because that person is too dumb to realize, no, you got to break these eggs. So you make an omelet, dummy. How do you think I'm going to make this omelet? Shit has break down. Everything's going just perfectly fine, right? Everything is going perfectly fine, but you're in a phase of breakdown. You're in a, in a, phrase, in a phase of, of dissolving and losing. And I can tell you this, I've experienced it so many times in my life. I've experienced it so many times in my life as it relates to my ego. Different Elliots are formations of different egos. And I don't know, maybe, I guess just, just, just my nature in my life. I'm ch I change a lot, right? And I give myself permission to change. People, and people who can't hang with me, it's okay. This is why, you know, uh, people leave. They can't stand Elliot. New Elliot. There's always a new Elliot, right? Why is there always a new Elliot? When somebody says new Elliot, old Elliot, I don't know who they're talking about. There's my old Elliot from 2015, 2010. Which one, right? And when you say new, what do you mean? You mean from last year, this year? Always in this, in this process of managing evolutionary growth, right? This goes along with our last conversation, right? And what does that mean? That means that the, per, the version of yourself, right? I'm going to bring this back to you. The version of yourself that was required for you to get to where you are is no longer resourceful for who you need to be in the next phase of your life. Life is happening in phases. We're asked to step up to new phases, new challenges. But who you were was appropriate for the challenge at level one. If you go into level two, level one version of you got to die. I can't be ve version one Elliot in a version 2.0 world. My life has changed. I can't be the same. And that, that change, though, comes with breakdown it comes with breakdown and if you're too attached to what's being taken away from you then you stymie the process you slow down the process you and then what did I, what the word i used before resistance you resist in the process let the process be let everything be and just watch be an observer right that's really that's that's the essence of being a king this is what the guys from the meditation books and and courses talk about Watch like an observer, be a, a detached observer, objective about your situation. Right now you're being very subjective. Subjective, subjectivity is when I start to believe my feelings and I get wrapped up in my own thoughts and my own moods and uh, feeling sorry for myself. You're being too subjective. You're too wrapped up in yourself. But when you look at what's happening around you and you just notice it like a bystander, like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy how, for me, for example, I was driving my car a couple of weeks ago. My whole family's in the car and out of nowhere, a couch appeared, right? 
a couch appeared on the road. It was late at night. There are no lights on the road out here. And it must have fallen off the truck of the person in front of me because out of nowhere appeared a fucking truck. Bang. Bang right into it. And Colleen's car, I was driving. Suburban. It's practically totaled. We're still here waiting for the, uh, for, for the insurance company to tell us, you know, what they're going to do. This is like you when you say, oh, my world is upside down. Things are going my way. That wasn't going my way. That wasn't going my way at all. That wasn't a beautiful thing, but I had no feelings about it, right? I'm going to have to end up spending money, right, to get the car fixed, or I'm going to have to get a new car, but I'm not letting myself go into a mood about it, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it dictate how I behave and think and act and feel until the problem's resolved. I just got to take the licking and keep on ticking. Right? You take the licking, you keep on ticking. You don't, you don't wallow and worry. And so let your life be, bro. Let your life be. Watch and observe. And very important, learn how to take right action when it's required. Because if you're so caught up in the mood of the situation, you're so caught up in the mechanics of the problem. When a solution is offered to you, you're going to be too emotional. You're going to be too distracted. You're going to be too confused. You're going to be too tired to take action on it. By staying neutral and being an observer, the answer will come to you. The light will, will, will show itself to you but you gotta be able to see it. You know when you see it? When you take your eyes up out of your belly button and look up, then you gotta look up. That's what I'm gonna tell you right now. That's my, that's my final piece to you today, sir, young man, bruh. Look up, keep your head up, keep your head up. With, withstand it, right? Withstand the challenges and keep going. You got this, you got this, bro. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.